G'day Art Adventurers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Christopher and today I'm painting a commissioned watercolour landscape view of cherry blossom trees framing Washington DC's tidal basin. I've chosen to paint the view in the early evening, which is a bit of an unusual thing when working in the medium of watercolours. The Jefferson Memorial will form the lit up central focal point and a Japanese stone lantern is a second point of interest. I'm mostly using Holbein watercolours on a Japanese 100% cotton watercolour paper called Muse Lamplight. While you watch this painting unfold, I thought I would share some history and information I've researched about the subjects in this landscape scene. The tidal basin itself is partly natural, but mostly man-made. It has a total area of 107 acres, and it's surrounded by many Japanese cherry trees, and also various significant monuments and ancient Japanese artifacts. The most notable monuments include the Jefferson Memorial, which I'm painting in this painting, the Martin Luther King Jr. National Memorial, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial, and the George Mason Memorial. The first version of the Tidal Basin was constructed in the 1880s for two main reasons. Of course, the most obvious reason was to be a beautiful visual centerpiece for the US capital city. But in fact, the main reason the Tidal Basin was made was to serve the practical purpose of flushing water in and out from a narrow inlet called the Washington Channel into the famous Potomac River twice every day during the shift in tides. The Tidal Basin was initially called Twinning Lake in honor of Major William Johnson Twinning of the US Army Corps of Engineers. He was Washington DC's first engineer commissioner and it was actually his idea to build a tidal reservoir. In 1949, the Tidal Basin was redesigned into the form we know today. The construction firm Alexander and Repass did the work. And this is somewhat surprising as Alexander was of African ancestry and Repass was of European ancestry. All around the Tidal Basin and the areas nearby, are thousands of Japanese cherry trees. How so many cherry trees came to be located in Washington DC is rather a complex story, but much of it has to do with Eliza Skidmore. Eliza was a writer, photographer, geographer, and the first female board member of the National Geographic Society. She also visited Japan many times, and afterwards she proposed the idea of planting cherry trees in Washington DC, but she was repeatedly ignored. Finally, decades later, in 1909, the First Lady, Helen Taft, responded finally to Eliza's idea. Eventually, Tokyo City gifted 2,000 trees to Washington DC, but they were infested with insects and worms and had to be destroyed. Another 3,020 trees were sent, finally arriving on March 26, 1912. And the First Lady Helen Taff planted the first cherry tree the very next day. From 1912 to 1920, cherry trees were then gradually planted all around the original tidal basin and the first official Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C. was held in 1934. On the northern side of the Tidal Basin, facing the Jefferson Memorial, is a large stone Japanese lantern. It was moved from a temple in Tokyo, where it stood for at least 300 years, and then placed at the Tidal Basin in 1954 marking the centenary of US-Japanese trade relations. Every year since then, this Japanese lantern is lit to signal the start of the Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, DC. In 1908, the Tidal Basin Inlet Bridge was constructed. This links the East and West Potomac Parks. A decade later, the area near the bridge was turned into a man-made beach. There are even 
chlorine machines, adding chlorine to the water so that people could safely swim. But this beach was run as a whites-only facility, so it was closed in 1925 to avoid the increasingly awkward issue of racial integration at the site. After this unfortunate moment in history, a competition was held in 1925 to build a memorial near the former beach to Theodore Roosevelt. John Russell Pope was the architect who submitted the winning design, but this memorial was never built. In 1934, President Franklin Roosevelt proposed erecting a monument to Thomas Jefferson at the site. In 1935, John Russell Pope was chosen once again as the architect, and he created a large domed building of neoclassical design. This monument would acknowledge Thomas Jefferson, who among other things was the third president of the United States and the main drafter and writer of the Declaration of Independence. Sadly, Pope died before construction of his monument began in 1938, and the design of the monument was then modified from his original vision at the request of the Commission of Fine Arts into a more conservative design. The construction saw significant opposition initially, as many trees would have to be destroyed or moved, and many Washingtonians noted that the site did not align with Leofont's original plan and design for the city. However, building did continue, and in 1939, a competition was held to select a sculptor for the planned statue in the centre of the memorial. Rudolf Evans was selected as the main sculptor. Finally, on April the 13th, 1943, which is the 200th anniversary of Thomas Jefferson's birthday, the memorial was officially dedicated by President Roosevelt. However, the Evans statue had not yet been finished due to material shortages as a result of the continuing World War II. Instead, a plaster cast was painted, and this was made to look like a bronze statue. It was not until 1947 that the final complete actual bronze statue was added to the memorial, thus completing the entire site. I hope you have enjoyed watching this landscape speed paint and the history of the subjects in it. I'd love to know what you found to be the most interesting thing in the comments below. Or did you already know all this history already? Even though I now live in Washington DC, I have to admit I knew very little of this topic before I started my research. And of course, if you're new here, I'd super appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it, and why not click that like button while you're at it as well. I'm also aware that it's getting towards the end of the year and it's time to be reflecting on the year that was, 2018, and the year that's coming up, 2019. Firstly, I wanted to say thank you so much for the support that I had during my first year on this channel. It's meant so much to me to see your comments, your likes, your interaction with me in the comments and just in general. And I've made some really great friendships along the way. And I'm looking forward to way more of that in 2019. If you're a newer subscriber or if you've been here for since the start, I'd love to know what sort of things you would like to see more of in 2019. Of course, I'm still going to be exploring a lot of things that I find interesting and going on my own art adventures, but I'm keen to add in some things that you might enjoy. So you might have already seen that I do a diverse range of things. I'm not afraid to try out new stuff. And I'm also inspired when people give me suggestions of the sorts of things they would like to see painted or what sort of art subjects they would like for me to tackle. So feel free to let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see for 2019. And thank you once again for all the support. It really means a lot. And I'll say goodbye now and you can sit back and enjoy the rest of this speed paint. Bye.